Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I put a video out. Uh, I've had a lot going on recently and just not really had the time or the chance to do any videos. Uh, I'm out today with Lewis, M3HHY. Uh, Lewis, Wingway, Manchester. You've probably seen some of his videos and we have done videos, uh, haven't we, in the past two of us doing radios. Um, I've recently come across a set of WLN radios. These are C52s. I think it's a DK C52 radios. They claim to be, I think, uh, 3 watts in power, uh, 16 channel UHF. Um, I've got them reprogrammed to some amateur radio bands and a few PMRs, and I thought I'd just give them a bit of a try today, see what sort of range uh, we can get out of these. So, we've both got one set up onto uh, a nice clear channel. We're going to uh, have a bit of a play with them and see how it gets on. Um, I've got a review to do as well. I might uh, cover that a little bit later on, I think, yeah. um, when I'm back home. Um, but for the moment, let's have a bit of a play and just see how good the quality is of these. 20 odd pound a pair, how good can they be? I don't know, let's find right, out. Right, so, walking off now just to see how, uh, how we can work these. So Lewis has gone off the other way, he went off a few minutes ago. Um, I'm just heading off in a different direction, just on Canic Chase. Uh, and I want to just see how good they are. Now I've done radio chests before using similar sort of radio, 16 channel uh, UHF. A lot of the Chinese radios claim to be 5 watts. They're never going to be 5 watts, normally about 2, if that. Uh, these, I think, claim to be uh, 5 watts. Again, they're not going to be. I think someone did test and get um, probably about 3 watts out of them. Uh, I've used these to contact local repeaters and I've got through really well. I've been very impressed with them so far. But I've not actually used two of these radios talking to each other on uh, Simplex. So what I wanted to do is just to give it a try, see how we get on. Um, so I'm probably quite a distance from Lewis. Lewis went off way over there somewhere uh, a few minutes ago, uh, a few minutes before I started recording. So we've recovered a bit of a, a bit of a, a distance away. So I'll give him a shout now, see whether he's on. 20 KBA to M3HHY. Lewis, you there? Yep, well said James, I'm just uh, doing my intro, I'll call you back in, uh, in literally 10 seconds. No worries mate, sorry about that, standing by. Okay, so operation of these things then. You've got your main power button there, channel up, channel down, push to talk, volume up and volume down. Very simple. The great thing about these is you charge them up using one of the older style USB uh, plugs, charge elite, and a standard Kenwood. Okay, James, 20 KBA M3 HHY, possible can it chase? 20 KBA M3 HHY, yeah. Uh, Lewis, good to hear you, my friend. Uh, yeah, portable and can it chase. I've uh, forgotten exactly where about we are on can it chase, but as long as we don't forget where we put the car, we should be okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure where I am either. I'm not familiar with with things around here. But I have said on the video um, that was a couple of miles between us. But I'm going to put it on the uh, on the map on Google Earth uh, when I come to edit this video, so we can see uh, how far apart we are. But it must be a couple of it's miles. Great audio. Things, um, really impressed. And, uh, we're For what it is in the size. Quite a bit now, uh, walking out. So, uh, yeah, uh, I've just been explaining that we've come out to test a few radios today and obviously the video for this is going to be on your channel, uh, the review. So yeah, you're sounding great anyway, James. Uh, really, really good. Uh, back to you. Yeah, Lewis, same over this side. Um, yeah, it's been quite a, a few minutes since we last spoke um, and since I in fact saw, saw you last. So yeah, we'll have a look on the, the GPS in a short while and we'll plot it uh, on the maps probably for later on. Um, the problem is, Lewis, the audio is uh, BBC quality, they said, my friend. Um, and I don't know how we're going to be able to test <laughs> the range because uh, it sounds like you're just like a metre behind me. So, um, you know, it's coming through really well, really well, very, very clear. Uh, for the size as well and the compact size of this, it's incredible, really. Yeah, no worries, James. Yeah, it does sound, uh, it does sound really good. Uh, I mean, I know it's probably not the best uh, place to test, really, because it's quite, quite flat where we are. Way over there. Yeah, it's sounding good. Audio is very, very nice. Nice and loud and punchy and clear. Uh, but yeah, I love these little radios, James. I was just saying I wasn't going to do a review on these, but I might have to pick up a pair now to go with the KDC1, because the uh, that little tiny, tiny cousin of that radio. I'm just sitting in the bush, James, uh, trying to shelter from uh, the wind. It's quite windy here. Um, 
don't know if you're picking up any wind noise on the transmission, but it's... So it's coming through clear from your end. Uh, back to you. Yeah, definitely, Lewis. Um, very, very clear. Yeah, I've had a little bit of wind from you, but not very much. Nothing to, uh, to write home about. Um, yeah, because you've got the... Um, I'll figure out which ones you've got now. It's the older versions of this. They're slightly taller, aren't they? But the same kind of style. Just a little bit taller ones. Uh, the three volts in operation, I believe. Three points... It's 3.4 volts. Well, the the battery can last quite a couple of days, you know, on these. So, uh, obviously, it's not going to be 5 watts in power. But the power seems to be working so far quite well. Yeah, definitely, M3. HHY portable. Um, yeah, they, they are working really well, James. I'm, uh, I'm impressed. They are very good. Uh, I like the design. I, I think I prefer the design over the uh, KDC1, actually. Uh, but, yeah, I left my KDC1 turned on once in the uh, in the shack and they won for a couple of weeks in standby and they didn't die uh, so yeah the batteries last a while you probably get a good few hours out of this on, on transmit yeah they're good Impress. they're good uh, I'm just noticing James you take uh, the little speaker mic I wonder if they're the same speaker mic as the both ends the Kenwood star ones let's have a look at that USB charging as well and they've got their own I'm just showing for the video they've got their own little cradle that they sit in like a belt clip cradle so yeah cracking James what did you pay for them about 20 quid did you say yeah, I think it's about 20 quid for the two. Came from China, came in a box with two leads. USB, uh, English, British plug, USB charger to charge them both up. No cradles. Uh, sometimes they are advertised with cradles, uh, but these didn't have cradles, it's just a plug-in charger. But yes, it's a standard Kenwood. Standard Kenwood charger for these. And um, the uh, programming leads all compatible with the Bofangs. So I've used some software to program onto the uh, the frequencies that we're using now, the amateur radio, on seven centimeters. Uh, very very simple to do. Very simple, Lewis. Um, yeah, and that's what I like is the standardisation of the leads. Um, so I can't fault them. Really can't fault them. Yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good thing, I suppose, James. Isn't it? you don't have to buy any extra leads and things like that? Yeah, the, the charging cradle would be nice. The charging dock would be nice, but. Um, so it's not a it's not a deal breaker, is it? For twenty quid, you probably pay another tenner um, for them to come with charging cradles. So yeah, I suppose it's, uh, it's not the be all and end all. But yeah, really good radios, James. I'm, I'm definitely impressed. Like I say I might have to invest in a pair. They just need something like a bit of a comms kit, aren't they? Or you know, to give to like the kids and stuff like that. Um, you know, yeah, really impressed. Really, uh, really impressed, James. I wonder if you got anything else you want to add. So doing car to car work, that'll be interesting to see. Uh, but other than that, Lewis, I'm going to head back now. Uh, I don't want to get lost, and it's going to be uh, probably about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes walk from where we last saw each other. And if you've been walking the same time, we're about half an hour away from each other. So uh, before it starts to rain, I might head back towards you. Yeah, it does look like it's going to rain. So on the camera, I'm stood underneath a tree. Uh, I should point out. Right, so I'm in quite quite a wooded area here. Um, it's it's going to be over there somewhere, way through those trees. The tree. uh, so yeah, I don't know if it's a, like a really black cloud overhead, James. I'm sure you can see where you are. I don't know if it's a running out. Uh, just try to get back to the car quick. So yeah, I'll see you back at the car. I'll say 73. Uh, cheers for the test. And we'll catch you further down. Uh, M3 HHY, but I'll kind of chase. Okay, Lewis, I'll catch you shortly. I'll stay on the frequency. Um, but yeah, from 20KBA M3HHY, uh, standing by. Yep, there right. no, we I'm just going to quickly wrap up this video and then I'll give you another shout and here we'll have a chat while we, while we walk back. Okay, we'll do. Standing by. Right, so there's a few people over there. So that over there leads over towards Stafford. So that's where we are in conjunction with uh, Cannock and us being on Cannock Chase. Stafford's in that direction, and that's up north. Right, okay. So there you have it. Okay, so unfortunately the last bit of footage uh, which I was going to show you uh, has not copied over properly and I've lost it. So I'm going to do a bit of a final conclusion in the comfort of my shack. So these are the two uh, radios. It costs £20, uh, £20.99p for these two little devices. Uh, and it comes with uh, their own charger, USB leads. Unfortunately, it's the older. I think these are the micro uh, USB plugs here, or is it the mini? I'm, I never get those. Uh, never get those quite right. But um, all the same, um, it comes with it. Nice bit of kit. 
Um, so these are the WLANs, the DK um, C50s, 52s, I think. Um, and I, overall, I'm really impressed with them. Uh, it's a lovely size, very light. Don't feel too cheap either to hold. The uh, there's a few things that I'm not too happy about. Uh, but first of all, let's do the the, uh, the things I do like. Uh, standard Kenwood size um, speaker mic port, which again is ideal for speaker mic and for programming. If you've got the the standard Beifeng or the Kenwood plugs. The bottom protected plug socket is for the charger. Now you can get desktop chargers for these. I don't know whether you can buy them separately or independently from the radios. However, sometimes you can get these radios as a pack with the desktop chargers, but uh, you'd be paying a bit more for that. Operation of these, oh, before we do that, let's just show you the back. It's just a standard uh, 3.7 volt uh, battery, like a telephone battery. It just uh, pops into there. So to turn the device on, press and hold the power. Power on. 13. And you have 16 channels on here. So volume up is the volume up button there. Volume down. Now the disadvantage of this is that um, whatever you set this as, the volume wise, when next time you turn it on, it'll always come on to being full volume. So we can have the volume down now, and you can be using the radio. And if you wanted to use in quiet conditions, the problem is if ever you try to, even with the volume down on low, change the channel. 12, 11, 10. It's still extremely loud. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you can't do any private covert spying work using these radios uh, because of that noise. So turn it off. Press and hold. Um, turn it on again. Power on. 16. And now the volume is again on full volume, so it's very deafening, so you need to turn it down. Push the talk button on the side. It goes on to red when you transmit. It glows up green when you receive. It's a fixed antenna. You can't take this antenna off. It's completely sealed and fixed in. Um, but apart from that, that's it. Uh, I particularly like the uh, the belt harness here, this little holster. I really do like that. It holds it securely as long as you push that in and holds that clip into place. It does really hold it very firmly and very securely. And with it being a very light, uh, small radio anyway, um, you know, it's not likely to fall out uh, on its own accord. Microphone is that little dot there, um, and it's it's a lovely radio to use. Now, I've mentioned on the video earlier on that this is potentially a 5 watt radio. It isn't, so it's my error. It's a 2 watt radio. Um, however, 2 watts is quite unrealistic uh, to get from a, a Chinese radio. I think more realistically it's going to be about a watt, uh, maybe a little bit less. But we did some measurements. Now, Lewis uh, did a little bit of walking um, on the video but then stopped and left me to carry on so we weren't as far away as we'd originally thought however uh, looking at the map uh, to estimate where we were we, we were probably about a mile away from each other uh, I, I predicted maybe maybe up to two miles but that's a bit generous I think it's more like a mile just over a mile perhaps um, but still we were in a built-up kind of wooded area and Lewis had gone down a bit of a, a valley as well during his walk so you know to get out of that little valley he was in and to get through all the trees that were surrounding us they did really well uh, exceptionally well really um the the thing that i liked about these radios is the audio quality it was nice and loud so it didn't give it full justice on that video uh the video didn't really record all the bass um but it's it's like comparing a small speaker with a good quality uh, sort of Motorola radio. Um, it's had the, the the depth and the sound and the bassiness of a Motorola radio. Uh, that's what initially kind of struck me. Uh, if you have it on full volume, it can sound a little bit distorted. Um, but you know, when I use these, I don't have them on full volume anyway. Very impressed with it. It's it's, it's lovely audio. I've hit some local repeaters. It's all programmed onto amateur bands and the amateur radio frequencies and I've hit some uh, 7 centimeter repeaters uh, in uh, sort of Birmingham and Wolverhampton way 
which I was very surprised about. I did take a trip up to Lancashire uh, last week uh, and managed to get onto the GB3MR repeater. Uh, now I was 27 miles away from that repeater, um, staying with me uh, with my mother for a couple of days, and uh, I managed to get through to the MR repeater and actually spoke to Lewis, uh, who's a uh, sort of Stockport area, uh, on that on that repeater. So that was quite uh, quite interesting. So very surprised. So all in all, for twenty pounds and ninety nine p, you can get these from eBay, uh, Amazon, loads of different places. Uh, very impressed. Really worth the money. Definitely worth the money. Um, so that's it. I hope that video has been of some uh, some interest or some use. Um, I'm going to be doing a few more reviews and uh, hopefully over larger distances as well and uh, doing a bit of a, a comparison between various different types of radios. So we'll uh, we'll see. That's going to be coming up over the next week or so. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time.